So the first thing you're going to want to do, um, and now this all gets a little bit tedious, is we want to edit our samples a little bit and clean them up. So if I take these, uh, uh, these samples that I made and dump them into arrangement view here, actually they go on an audio track, I'm going to go ahead and edit these so that they're a little bit cleaner. Now I'm going to be using a couple features here. Um, I'm going to be using Ableton Live Fades and Ableton Live's Consolidate function. So the first thing I want to check that is in Preferences, this is a uh, good feature to know about, that under Record, Warp, and Launch, there's a section for Warping and Fades. I believe by default, Ableton puts fades on all of its clips edges. You want to go ahead and turn that off because if there is a fade on the beginning of your clip, if I zoom in here, that's going to be affecting your transient and we don't want that. So you want to make sure that you turn that off before you start recording these clips. But I'm going to go ahead and run through each of them. What I want to do is I want to First off, I'm going to highlight all of them and turn warping off. We do not want warping and we do not want loops either. So I'm going to turn both of those off. And then one by one, this does get pretty tedious, but part of sound, part of uh, the sound design uh, game is doing this tedious stuff is I'm going to shorten them a bit and fade them out. This way I don't have, get any clicks or pops at the end of the 808. Once I've short, shortened them, turned off the fade at the beginning, and lengthened the fade at the end, I can then go about consolidating them. So I'm going to go through one at a time and do that to every one. This might take a time, take a bit of time, so I'll speed this up in the video here. All right, that looks good. Didn't take very long. There's not a whole lot here, but uh, doing 128 of them, you know, it might take you 10 minutes or so. Uh, just go ahead and struggle through the clicking. It's part of the game. All right, now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and consolidate each one of these. Um, and this is going to do a few things for me. Uh, first off, it's going to organize it into a folder for me. Uh, so when I look at it in my Ableton Live project, it's been organized for me. Um, it's also going to, to do what's called normalizing. So each one of these is going to become, is going to be normalized by this consolidation process. Uh, Ableton Live has bundled in normaling with consolidating here, uh, unlike a lot of DAWs don't do that. Um, what normalizing is, is Ableton is going to analyze the clip for volume. It's going to find the peak of, the, of this clip's volume, so the highest point of this clip's volume, and then it's going to turn everything up until that peak is at zero, or at the highest volume that Ableton can do. So uh, when I hit consolidate there, you'll notice nothing really looks too different. It created a new clip first off, but you'll notice that my volume knob is now at negative 10. Ableton Live puts the volume down like that because it's normalized the clip, but still wants to retain the original volume of the clip, so it turns it down by that much. So if I just set that back to zero, now you can see here that the transient there, the highest amplitude peak of this audio is at the very top. And that's exactly what we want. We want all of our 808s, their loudest point, to be at the very top. So I'm going to go through and do that for each one as well. Consolidate, consolidate. And just run through that real quick. Again, the hot key for consolidation is Command J. Okay, now I'm, I'll, I can do the volume thing all at once. I'm just going to highlight each one and set the volume back to default. Um, this is something you can batch process this for each clip. Um, setting something to default in Ableton, all you have to do is select the parameter, hit delete, you're good to go. Alrighty. Now what I'm gonna do is find this in Finder and we're gonna add it to a rack. If I simply right click on my clip, one of the options I get is show in Finder. Now it's going to jump right to my project folder and these are all the 808s that I consolidated today. If I switch over to 
a different finder view. I like this one here. This is a command three in finder to switch to this view. You'll see that here's my Ableton Live project. Whoops, 808 maker. Samples inside of the 808 maker process consolidated. And there's all those samples that I just consolidated. Really nice. I'll switch back to list view here. Um, and one great way to get all these 808s, first off, organize it by kind, select the audio files, and then you can switch back to date modified or even name. That way when I drag it into operator, it's in a nice order, one, two, three, four, five, and so on. So I'm gonna jump back into Ableton here. After you edit your clips, you don't really need any of this stuff anymore. Um, you can save this into a project. I like to group things. So Command G, I'm gonna group all these tracks together and just use the group to hide all that stuff. I'll even just mute it there so we don't get any of that. Um, I'm gonna create a new MIDI track here. On this MIDI track, I'm gonna dump an instrument rack. I like to use the uh, search function in the browser to search for rack. Uh, that's Command F to get into the, to automatically search. I'm just going to search for rack, instrument rack, dump that on my MIDI track, and see where it says drop instrument or sample here. I'm just going to take all these samples at once and dump them right in there. Now, I'm not going to hit any MIDI notes quite yet because what it's going to do is play all of the samples I dropped in there at the same time. That's going to be crazy peakage and blow out my speakers. I don't want to do that. Um, so let's organize our rack a little bit here. Now this is what's called creating a 128 rack. Um, you don't have to have 128 samples to do this. Uh, you can do this with any variety of samples, snare drums, even uh, bass sounds, uh, any sort of sound that you want you can do this with. Um, I like doing it with kick drums because I like putting the, uh, a kick drum in my default project. That way I can access my kick drums really quickly, have a whole bunch of options. So let's go ahead and set this up here. If I hit this little tab of my instrument rack, this is sort of like the mixer of my, of my instrument rack. I get volume, panning, mute, solo, all sorts of good stuff there. Um, and the one thing that we want to look at here is the chain selector. So if I hit the chain selector, Essentially what the chain selector is, and this is a very unique thing to Ableton, is for each track here, or each what we call chain, so device chain in our instrument rack, um, this little blue doohickey right here, and I can move this around, dictates when this chain will be audible. This little orange marker up here, depending on where I move it, if there's a chain in that position, it will play that chain. So if now I play this, you can hear it is playing that one, but none of the other ones. If I were to move this back to the beginning and hit a note, it will play all the other ones. Now, we want to organize this such that each chain gets its own little section of this, of this graph we have here. Now there's a great way to do this if we just go ahead and start moving these one by one into their own position. Uh, it's going to take forever, but no, just kidding. You don't have to do it that way. Um, the easy way to do it is if you just drag this chain all the way out so that no matter where this goes, it'll play. And then I just hit right click. I just need to do that for one chain. And now if I right click in here, you can see distribute ranges equally and that's going to automatically distribute these out so that this chain selector now is going to jump through all of my different 808s. How useful is that? So that is an extremely useful parameter right there. Let's go ahead and right away we'll throw it on a macro. Macro one, sure. So that's the basic principle of, of creating a 128 rack is using that chain selector, I'm putting a bunch of samples in there, uh, opening up the chain selector, pulling one all the way out, right clicking, distributing those ranges equally, 
and then mapping that to a knob. So that's the basic process there. If you have 128 of these kick drums too, this chain selector, every single number on this knob will be a different bass drum. Currently, it looks about like eight values per kick drum. So if I keep moving this up, it's the same kick drum until I get to number nine. So I urge you to make 128 of these. In the included project file, I have already created 128 of these. So if you want to experiment with this chain selector, it's a lot of fun. All right, so the last part of this 128 rack is that we want to utilize some of these other macros on here. So if we recreate that same envelope shape from earlier by turning our sustain all the way down and then mapping our decay to one of the macros, we can get some envelope control on these sample 808s. Great, sounds good. Now, however, there's a roadblock here. If I do want to actually add these, this decay mapping to each 808 on here, I would have to go through and map that to each one. Uh, for the sustain value, I do have, there's a cool little feature. If I right click, I can copy value to siblings. However, for mapping, this isn't a fully supported feature of Ableton Live. Um, if you are interested, there's a keyword to search in Google for this, um, and it's map value to siblings. So I'll say that again, it's map value to siblings, Ableton Live, and you want to type in options.txt. I'm not going to get into that because it does take a little bit of finagling and finder, uh, and this tutorial's already gone long enough. Um, so be sure to search that um, as you go. and have fun making these 128 racks. That's the essential principle behind it and there's lots more you can do with it. Um, I hope you enjoy the project file that I have included. There's lots of 808s and different textures and tones in there uh, that you can use for your own projects. Um, again, I'm Will Clark. Thanks for watching Pyramine. For more videos like this, please subscribe to our channels. Um, and if you have more questions for me, my information for our PeerMind mentoring program and a link to my profile is in the description. Um, so if you want to learn more about this sort of thing, uh, book a session with me and I'd be happy to go into more detail. Thanks for watching. If you're a music producer, subscribe to our channel and stay up to date on the latest PureMind tutorial videos, track breakdowns, elite sessions, and more. Visit us at PureMind.com.